Hey, 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 ho. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Is there uh, anyone live already? Let's see, let's see. Anyone watching? Uh, right. I can see that there's a little bit of a delay. Right, but it seems to be working. Apologies for the few minutes delay. Apparently, YouTube did not like me today. So it took it a while before it actually um, recognized the signal that I'm sending to it. So now uh, everything seems to be okay. Do let me know in the chat if you guys receive anything. And then we can start with the setup of the MIDI for Tractor. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, I can see there's one, there's one person in the chat. Hey, Sarah, how's it going? Uh, perfect. So if we then have a signal and everything seems to be working correctly, then we can start. Uh, so, yeah, welcome, everybody. Uh, the camera's there. <laughs> I do uh, have a bit of a hack rig today, so hopefully it would work out. And I just wanted to demonstrate a couple of things to those of you who have downloaded the mapping and are interested in actually, you know, getting a little bit more detail into how it's set up and everything. Before we get into any of that, though, I would like to have one disclaimer. It's not an official solution. Um, I have used this for many years, actually. Uh, I first set it up on Windows on Tractor 2 version something. I can't remember which one, but it was like maybe five years ago that I did this. And then um, I moved to Mac, so it works on Windows and um, um, MacBooks, uh, OS, uh, OS X. So this is for sure, because I've used it on both platforms, and I've also used it on Tractor 2 and Tractor 3 as well, um, which means that it should work with you guys as well. So um, it's relatively simple. And the reasoning behind what I was doing is because I used to DJ on actual um, with um, standalone gear with CDs or uh, like record box analyzed flash drives, I really wanted to recreate this on my own setup at home. And unfortunately, I couldn't spend all that money to really get the expensive equipment. So I just kind of wanted to come up with something. And also, I'm a bit of a nerd. So when it comes to these things, I really like playing around with the buttons and all that. So essentially, what I did was I really wanted to have um, the decks on their own with the hot cues and as many functions as I could that I know that I use regularly without having a separate uh, MIDI controller like a machine or uh, one of those... Um, XP controllers that now uh, people use with record box. So I really wanted to just kind of have the decks on their own just to simplify the setup and also be able to use it essentially with any mixer as well. So what we'll do is I'll currently uh, show you the two different ways that this can be set up. And then we'll have a couple of different, um, let me just get my notes here because you know, high tech paper always works. So yeah, I'll show you the setup. I'll show you different variations of the setup that I've had throughout the years, how it works in terms of cabling and all that stuff. And then we'll also actually go through that setup, three CDJs with a single um, mapping file, which is the same file that you guys have downloaded once you uh, went on my um, website and did all that. Then we'll talk about the differences between the setup on Windows and on Mac, and why does that matter? And then we'll talk about aggregating the sound cards and that kind of stuff. And then we'll have a quick walk through uh, the mapping. And then obviously whatever comes in the chat or um, any questions that you guys have, just like tag my name so that I can see it highlighted in the chat. And then we will, you know, do that. Um, answer them if I can, of course. So to begin with, let me just quickly, because I have two computers. So. I need to quickly relocate myself a bit. And then uh, if I go to this guy, perfect. So now you should actually be able to see my DJing laptop screen as well as a top-down view of my 
DJ decks really, and this is what we'll be talking about. And essentially, maybe just for now, I'll go there. And, and then essentially what um, I've done with this setup, you can see that it's literally the same exact kind of configuration that I have. And again, you can compare it here. It's literally the same, just mirror obviously on the camera. Um, with the only difference that on the picture I actually have the 2000 Nexus um, and in real life I have the 2000, um, just the 2000. They are virtually identical um, and the Nexus is just a minor upgrade on the 2000, so it doesn't really matter. But essentially what you see is my DJ laptop, which is a MacBook, and in the past it used to be a Windows machine as well. So for those of you who are using Windows, this would work identically. Is that word identically? Yeah, identically. Identically, you know what I mean, the same way. <laughs> so you have um, the, essentially you have um, the MacBook, yeah? And then the MacBook connects with a USB cable to a hub. And this is exactly the same hub that I use, uh, which is amazing. It's a 3.0 hub, which I've had for maybe five years now. Um, it is a um, powered hub, which in this particular case, it doesn't really matter because each device that gets connected to it gets power. Um, and this will be more relevant um, if you had something like machine connected or those X1 controllers for Tractor specifically, uh, which are obviously important um, because they get power from, from the USB bus. So what essentially is happening is I'm connecting um, one cable, USB, the black one. You can see that on the legend, hopefully. Um, that makes it clearer. You can see the um, hub. And then from the hub, I actually have the orange cables, or well they can be any color, but I've just color coded them orange here, um, connected them to the CDJs uh, with USB cables. And if I go to my top down view, this would essentially be this blue cable here. This is a USB cable. And this cable, I have it on each CDJ, um, one there that is just under the laptop, so you can't really see it, one there and one also on this side. So essentially, I have these three guys aggregating into a hub, and then the hub connects to the um, uh, MacBook Pro or any laptop, uh, whatever you're using really on your end. Um, so what are the blue cables? The blue cables are RCA or digital um, cables, essentially. And then what this means is that um, they come out of the normal outputs of the CDJs, and then they come into the mixer and you can see them here. So in this particular case, I'm using just digital connection, digital, they're called digital coax or RCA, whatever, um, just for sake of simplicity. And also I found through testing that on this particular unit, the digital output is much cleaner in terms of the audio signal. So I used to get a little bit of noise running the RCAs from here because I think they're on the same um, they're connected to the same circuit inside to uh, where the power supply is and that just gives it a little bit of noise. But on the digital ones, it's perfect. So if you have a mixer that allows digital, just run that. It, unless your mixer has an inbuilt sound card, which we'll talk about in just a second. And then, and I'll show you also how to set this up. The second way you could use it, and this is, um, so this is using the sound cards built into the CDJs and you have to aggregate them. And again, I'll demonstrate this in just a second. You have to aggregate this, these three uh, devices, um, so that they're recognized by Tractor as one. And this is uh, important because Tractor obviously cannot like read multiple sound cards. Like most, most softwares wouldn't allow you to read multiple sound cards. So you have to aggregate them. And uh, there's different ways of doing it on Windows and Mac, and we'll discuss this in just a second. Uh, let me just get some water. OK, I'm back. Yes. So this is by uh, using the sound cards that are built into the CDJs. You don't need a specific mixer for this. You can use any old mixer. And again, it doesn't matter how many CDJs you have, it would work exactly the same. In my particular case, I have three. Then there's two ways that you could use um, an inbuilt sound card if you have it in your mixer. So in my mixer, I have the DJM 2000. It's a very old mixer now. It's more than 10 years old, the model itself and probably the one I have. The one I have, I bought secondhand. But it's actually um, 
yeah, it has an inbuilt sound card, which means that I don't need these cables here anymore. The so the blue the the blue cables from the previous graph. Um, so these ones, these ones I don't need them anymore to transfer um, audio sound. What I can do is actually I can transfer this via USB, which then translates into having these three devices here, those three CDJs, into um, they're just controllers for the software. And then essentially what this means is that you can do exactly this with any CDJ. So it doesn't have to be the 400, it could be any other CDJ. This is called HID mode or human interface device, I believe it's called. Um, it's the actual name. And essentially what this means is it, it sends a signal and if you do this, that translates into something in the software, but the audio actually comes from the software directly into the mixer. So what does this mean here? This means that we connect the CDJs into the hub again, and then we run the uh, another USB cable, which is coming directly from the computer into the mixer. And then the way I do it actually, um, just for uh, sake of simplicity, is I actually run my uh, sound card into the hub. M most of the people, uh, most of the time, people would recommend that you do sound cards directly into the computer, but I've used this particular setup for many, many years now, and then each individual device gets power on their own. So I haven't really had any any audio dropouts or issues at all, like at all. Um, so I keep doing it this way, and then I've also gigged like this, and I haven't really had any, any issues at all. So this is the way the setup works in terms of cabling, and you guys can actually download this file for reference if you want from the um, from the links under the video. So if you want to kind of refer to it after the video or like the live um, has uh, finished, you can actually go and download this completely for free and then just kind of refer to these graphs if you want to set something like this on your own. Yeah, so this takes us to the next point, which is Tractor. So this is Tractor 3 point something. Let me just check. So it's 3.11.8. And it's actually what, I, what I've what i used. Uh, the I tried uh, looking for an update. I think this is the most current version as of um, this doing this live stream. And this is how it will look for most of you. And then what you do is actually then again, after you've connected everything, you would start seeing those devices in Tractor as just controllers and all kinds of stuff like that. So the way you do it, unless you guys have any questions so far, I can go further and um, show you how to set it up. So the way you do it normally is I uh, here I actually have the same exact file that you guys have in once you download it. And then with this file, we would set up all three CDJs just now. And sometimes it could be a little bit fiddly. But the good thing is that once you set it up, it actually would remember your settings and you wouldn't have to set this up at all, ever. Or at least on Mac. On Windows, from time to time, it does get the settings weird, um, in my experience. But I used to run a very, very old machine when I was running Windows with Tractor. So it could be just my particular laptop. But it was uh, just a very, very quick fix, um, just kind of changing which CDJ outputs to which channel. Um, and then... It took me less than 10, 20 seconds to set this up. So to do this, we go to, and then I'll show you how to do it with both running the CDJs and the mixer as an audio device. So to do this, um, the way you set this up, obviously, you have to import the mapping on top of the original um, deck kind of control. So the normal deck control would allow you to do cue and play button, tempo, uh, jog wheel and kind of like the standard settings, but it wouldn't let you use any of the Q stuff or uh, snap and quantize or whatever or browse or whatever. It just wouldn't let you do this because these devices are not built for this software. And so the way you do it is, uh, as you see, now I'm setting up from scratch and you can see that it immediately recognizes, it, immediately recognizes, excuse me, that I have three separate um, decks and it just indexes them by two and three and whatever. So it's not really clear which is which, but there's ways to test this to see how um, this is actually working. So if we select the first one, you can see that at the moment there's nothing. So if I actually select 
USB. So here I, I select USB. And on the screen, unfortunately, you can't really see this uh, because of my camera angle. Um, yeah, it doesn't really work. But on the screen right now, um, it does say uh, turn encoder. And then once you start turning this encoder, it would ask you to select a deck. And then it would say A, B, C, or D. And then this would translate into the four decks that are in Tractor. So the way I normally run them is A, B, and then C, because I use three decks. So if I select A, you can see uh, right now, because I already had a track loaded, it would actually um, run, it would actually just load the file, but we can actually exit it and then browse and load the same file. Just the normal way you would do it on any CDJ, really. So you can see that now, obviously it's not playing out loud. Now it will. And it could be a little bit of delay because I'm sending the um, audio of my tractor screen um, to the other computer via NDI, which is uh, just Ethernet connection. But the, um, uh, the video, excuse me, but the audio is coming straight through. So if there's a little bit of delay, this is just because of the stream and the technology that I use to present this to you guys. Normally there's no lag at all between obviously what you see and what you hear. So you can, you can hopefully hear. And then because of the way I had it set up before, it immediately understands which channel it should go to. But we reset this and we'll set it up again. But you can see that these at the moment are not really working or doing anything at all. Um, but your vinyl mode, your tempo adjust, your master tempo, jog wheel, um, track, uh, skip, forward, search, etc. this would work the normal way. So what we can do is actually, we go to, uh, and I'll also switch to full screen. No, I'll actually keep it this way, sorry. And I'll just move this there. Yeah, so if we then go to um, the controller manager screen in our preferences, we can then just say add and then go to import TSI and then all the way down you can see import other. And then you just navigate to wherever you've downloaded the file that you've downloaded from our website, click on it and click open. Yeah, that's simple enough. And you can see that something's loading there. And normally, Right now, nothing's affected, so you can still play the thing, um, but nothing would be affected. And this is because of the import and outport. Because these import and outports, they actually say what these controls that are programmed here affect, or which MIDI in and MIDI out uh, it would affect to. And at the moment, it's not assigned to anything. So if we actually cycle through, uh, like I said, you can't really say which is which because it assigns them randomly. But if we cycle through these, you can see uh, this one started flashing. So this is just a bit weird. And actually somebody um, in the questionnaire had um, the question around how to fix this. So if you see this, this normally means that we've hit the correct deck, but we actually have kind of created a virtual deck on top of the original deck. And that's why here now we have four. So what we need to do is select one, Oh, like I normally just select the one that's on the bottom because the top normally comes on, on, the, on the top of the list. So I select this, click on edit, and then go and delete. It will ask me, I'll confirm, and you can see that now it worked. So now you can see that it still doesn't work, which means that <laughs> what we just did was actually, um, uh, it didn't really work. Uh, and that's why it could get a little bit fiddly sometimes, uh, but uh, this just means that we just need to repeat the step. Uh, let me just test it real quick. Yeah, so we just deleted the, the wrong one. And that's why it could be a little bit fiddly. Uh, but if you actually set it up once and then go through this process, which normally doesn't take a long time, it's just now that I'm explaining it. So you can see again, started doing the same thing and we'll just go and delete the top one this time. So if we delete this guy, now, yes, and now it seems to have worked. And how you know if it's worked is once you select the correct deck in the in and out port, so you just need to select the in, the out port will automatically assign itself. The deck itself would reset and on the screen you would see turn encoder again. And once you turn to whichever deck, in this particular case A, you would see the thing working. 
and then uh, you then start seeing some some like other functions. So in this particular case, it looks the same way, but you can see that uh, here. I don't know if you can see this. Unfortunately, just the camera is a little bit far. But here it's um, actually showing that the snap feature is on, and this is again because I've just mapped it to this button. So this was this is lit right now when it wasn't lit before. So if I click it, I can see on the screen, and hopefully you can see there, um, top in the middle, literally, that the snap goes on and off, which means that the mapping is working. So you will then ask, but why are these three not lit? Because these are my hot cues. Well, these, this is simply because we don't have any. So if I click here, you can see that now we've assigned a hot cue. Then, I don't know, we can go and assign another one and another one. And everything seems to be working fine now. So this deck is assigned and it's working. And this is all we have to do. Let's move on to the next one. So uh, the process is exactly the same, literally, because right now we have the uh, default mapping, if you will. And essentially what we're doing is we're just overwriting with the same file that we have. It's literally the same exact file. You don't have to have separate files for separate decks. So if you click open, and then let's just try two or three. Let's see. So if I select, yep. See, so obviously you can't see this, but this guy started flickering, flickering like crazy, which is an indication that we've done something right. Yeah. So if I load the one that doesn't flicker, so this was this guy, it just doesn't do anything. But if I click on three, it starts flickering flickering like crazy. Hopefully you can see this on the camera there. They flickers, they flickers, which obviously just tells us that something is wrong. So we know here we've selected deck three, which means that we have to go back to the list, select the deck three that's on top of the list, and just delete this guy. So we're deleting the default, and then it immediately stopped flickering. Yeah, so now this is this guy. And then right now it reset again to uh, the default function saying select deck. So I normally select deck C for this guy. And you can see that immediately started working. Yeah. So it does, you can't hear it because the channel on the mixer is down. So now I see that also the ND, NDI a little bit, it's a little bit delayed, but like I said, this is just the technology and like the hacked way I'm doing this uh, workshop. So now we've set up this guy, again, just using the same exact file not really doing anything. We just kind of need to override the default and then delete it. And then finally, let's just move to uh, let's just move to this deck and also set this one up. Okay, so I just like um, decrease the volume on my on my microphone so that you don't hear it move around. So essentially, what I'll do is exactly the same steps. I have here selected deck B. So right now if I load something, if I load something, then uh, let me just move this away. If I load something, then let me just cure it. You can see that this works, but none of the hot cues actually do anything. So like I said, this is the default. And then what I'm going to do now is actually reset it again. And I'll do this very slowly, so hopefully you can follow. And then if you guys have questions, we'll stop for a second and we answer them, yeah? So now the deck started flicker flickering like crazy. You can see this in the camera there. So this means that we've hit the correct deck. Why did I, uh, if you saw that I selected deck two, why, how did I know that this was deck two? Is was just because this was one and then this was three. Obviously, this must be two. So what am I gonna do now? Is I'm gonna go and delete the default tracking and this would be then working. So the default tracking as in the previous examples is the one that's on the top. And then we just go to edit, delete, and we just need to confirm this. 
this is what it says. I just moved it so that you can see it because the camera was covering it. And then we just do this and then immediately the deck stopped flickering and it reset to the screen saying turn encoder. So now if I go, I select deck B, boom, it's working. And again, the NDI, the screen is a little bit behind the, the, the audio, but that just seems to go in and out of sync, so I can't really fix it. But the good thing is now my hot cues are working. And I can delete them. I can also, uh, I can also browse from the screen. So you can see I'm not touching, I'm just touching one button on the deck and you can see that the screen is moving and then I can browse and this is what I wanted to recreate with this mapping I just didn't want to touch the screen for anything other than typing um, and obviously using it for the waveforms so I'll just recreate a little bit okay so now since we have it set up the next question is how do we set the um, correct channel to the correct deck? Obviously right now it's working, uh, but this is because um, my tractor settings have been remembered by um, my previous setups, even though I completely deleted everything. So if we go to the audio setup, you can see that right now I've used um, my DJM output, so the USB option but I have here an aggregated device. So what this aggregated device essentially means is that we are combining the sound cards which are built into each individual deck and we're actually making the software think that they're all the same. So all one device with multiple channels. So this is two channels, this is two channels, this there is also two channels, which means that instead of three devices with two channels each, we're actually creating one device with six channels. And then the way we do this on Mac is we go to the audio MIDI setup. And then obviously here I have a bunch of stuff just because of my own configuration. Um, but this is the one that I've created. So you can see DJ setup, CDJs, and then I have the three decks in there selected. You can see this here. And then one of them also needs a drift correction. So the way you create this is very, very simple. You just go to the plus sign, you say create an aggregate device, and this, um, I'll just call it test, yeah. And then essentially I have a bunch of stuff. You can see that my DJM is there as well, but obviously right now we're not focusing on that. So I just aggregate, meaning I combine the sound cards into one. Yeah, so this is the test. And if I close this guy and go back to tractor. So I hear, uh, oh, right now it wouldn't show because I need to restart tractor. But if I restart tractor, um, it would come up here and then I'll be able to select it the same way I'm selecting DJ setup. So just to save a little bit of time, I won't be restarting tractor now. Um, but then, so we've selected it here, yeah. Did it appear? No. Let me just do that a bit, yeah. So, uh, here, so I selected this, and this means that now Tractor would look for an audio device which essentially correlates to these three decks. So all we have to do is actually come to our output routing or routing, and then uh, what this means is um, we have to select from the aggregate device with six channels, which channel would go to each deck. So the way they're assigned is a, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is normally the way it's uh, set for me. So what I do is I select one and two to deck C because with this guy, I want to select, uh, I want to control deck C and I obviously want it to come to uh, channel one on my mixer and then this is, um, this is controlled by the actual cable, so the audio cable, whether it's RCA or digital, it doesn't matter. Then I have uh, deck A is three and four, uh, sorry, that should be uh, three and four. So you can see there I had it wrong, so three and four. 
And then my deck uh, B, which is my actual deck three, would be five and six. So one, two here, three, four here, and then five, six there. And the way they're connected to the mixer is one, two, three, four, five, six. Hopefully this makes sense. And then the final step is um, on mixers that don't have USB sound cards, you just have to move it to line. So you have here the channel switch or the input switch. I just get rid of this phone. So you have, um, normally you have line or CD and phono, just push it to CD on all three cases. And then what this is doing now, you can see here also the, uh, I, won't, I won't play anything because it seems like, uh, or maybe I will, there you go. So this is there, this deck is there. Now you can hear it, now you can hear it. Yeah, then this deck is there. Now you can hear it, now you can hear it. And then finally, this deck, this is a bit loud, there. Now you can hear it, now you can hear it. So this is completely fine. So this is the way we set it up with uh, using the onboard sound cards. And now you're gonna ask me, hey, but what's happening with um, the Windows users? How can we do this? Because on Mac is super easy and Macs are uh, very, very good for sound stuff just because of reasons like this. On Windows, because like I said, I've used this sp exactly the same setup with Windows for a long time before I got my Mac. Uh, what you do is you download OSIO drivers or OSIO for O. It's uh, spelled A-S-I-O for the number O, A-L-L. -L. And then what you just Google this and then you just essentially install a driver that automatically does this for you. And then once it's uh, installed, you would be able to just come here and select it as a sound card the same way I did with this guy. And then you just have to make sure then your channels are allocated correctly. Yeah, hopefully this makes sense. If you have any questions, pop into the chat. Let me just get some uh, splash of water. Too much talking. I can see that in the chat, Miguel is actually asking routing or routing. I meant routing. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's ho hopefully cleared up now. Right, okay. So if you then want to use this with a mixer, any mixer that has an inbuilt sound card like this guy, you don't have to actually use the CDJs or you don't have to use these cables here at all. So normally I use that and these are not even plugged in. I've just plugged them in today for the purpose of demonstrating this. Then what happens is in here, instead of what we just created, just go to your output of your mixer. So this could be any mixer really, and also any CDJ. So the specific thing here is that the mapping is for these CDJs, but everything else that we're talking about in terms of the setup, the cabling, all that stuff, this is actually um, super general to any setup with any CDJ. So you can use 900s, 2000s, Nexuses, Nexuses 2s. You can use 800s, 8 feet, uh, no, sorry, not 800s, 850s um, because the 800s don't have USB. So essentially any CDJ created by Pioneer in the last 10, 12, 14 years that has a USB plug on the back you would be able to recreate this setup with just not the specific mapping that we uploaded because then you it just won't correlate to the same um, uh, com commands on the motherboard but you can create it on your own so in this particular case we are selecting our djm 2000 output which is this guy and then again we can go here and then the code slightly different but essentially it's the same logic so you can see one two and those are also channels one and two, which is a, st a stereo pair. In a lot of videos online, if you uh, look and you say, hey, I have a, I don't know, 12 channel mixer. This means that you have 12 single uh, inputs. But if you want stereo, this would mean that you have six. Yeah, so that's important. So this guy right now has six. Um, 
inputs or outputs depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, it's it's an output in this particular case, but essentially what you have is three decks or three channels on the mixer, and then both uh, all of them are stereo, which is then six. I hope I hope this makes sense. It's a lot of words. I do apologize, but there's just no really simpler way to really describe this. So again, you can see here one two is on deck C, then this channel, then five and six is here on deck, uh, sorry, uh, three, four is on deck A, or here in the middle, and then deck B is five and six, which is there, yeah. And then all you have to do is in this particular case, on this mixer and on any mixer you would be able to switch that, is go from CD to USB, zack, 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 and then this guy's working, this guy's working, and this guy's working. And actually what's so funny is if you guys um, go on YouTube, a lot of DJs are looking at other DJs not really having their um, decks connected and they're like, oh, you're playing a pre-recorded set, but that's not really the case. So. Right now, if I actually just go and completely, see these are my three cables, completely um, disconnect them, I still have audio. Because there's no audio cables involved and this is why I like this setup so much because it's literally a couple of audio, cab a couple of audio cables, excuse me, a USB hub and that is it. Easy peasy. Let's see, any questions at all in the chat or anything? Let's just quickly stop that. Let's just quickly see what's up in the chat. Uh, I need to move a bit. Apologies for the noise. Azure for all. Yes, that's the one. Uh, it's it's really nice because you can essentially it automatically aggregates it. In the past, um, it has been a little bit flimsy in a way that sometimes it would work. Sometimes it wouldn't work, uh, but in the last couple of years, obviously I'm not using Windows anymore for that kind of purpose, but in the last couple of years, I've actually heard uh, very good things about it and it's probably worth checking out. The problem that I used to have with Windows, and it wasn't so much of a problem uh, rather than inconvenience, was that um, sometimes uh, when I restart Tractor, it would just kind of flip my decks. So this guy would come to this channel or to that channel, but I'll just go back to the output routing um, tab and then I'll just uh, allocate them manually. And like I said, this takes uh, just a couple of seconds normally. Yep, that's it. Next on the agenda, let's see. So next I wanted to show you guys a little bit about what function to find where on the deck. And for this, we are going to go, let me just see, there. Yeah, this is a little bit better maybe. Or there, let me see. Uh, yeah, let's do this one actually. This one might work a bit better. Okay, and again, I do apologize for the noise. Um, I have to move the mic because, you know, I've just hacked the setup for today's session. <coughs> Excuse me. So, what you can find here is obviously your normal controls, Q and play. You know, if you play music, you should be fairly familiar with those. Your search and track, your jog wheel, and your pitch slider, master tempo, and uh, tempo just so like the range of, of the slider. Your loop controls haven't changed at all as well, um, uh, with the exception of these two, because I, I've actually changed them to give me a pre-recorded loop. So you can see here, if I click on this guy, it will actually give me automatically a four bar loop. And if I click on this guy, it would give me automatically an eight bar loop. And this is something minor that I changed uh, because before it used to be one bar and two bar. And then once a loop is engaged, um, so if I click there, once a loop is engaged, you can actually go longer or shorter. Yeah. So hopefully this makes sense. And the interesting part is really at the, at the very top of the deck. So those buttons that are lit up at the moment, um, these are my hot cues. And then if I click on this guy, it would start at hot cue one. And then you can see that the deck may be stopped 
and it will automatically start it. So this essentially completely recreates the experience that you have on a very high-end players. And also if you have like pads or, or like a, another controller. The key thing on this to work actually, uh, excuse me, uh, is there. So if we actually go to, uh, where is it? To the transport control, your play uh, cup mode, Q play cup mode, has to be set on instant rather than on release. Because essentially what this does is this function is, um, if it's on release, it will actually only function once you've released the button. So right now I've pressed it and you can see it's already, it's jumping to one, but it, it doesn't start unless I release it. So if you really want to bang on the cues a little bit, this normally creates a little bit of a delay and it's just super annoying. So if you click it on instant, you can see that I press down and without me removing my finger, it's already starting. And then it's much more instant. So the default setting is on release. Just come to your transport and click on instant and this would make this work perfectly. Yeah, so we have the four cues. And oh, sorry, the three cues here in this particular case. And then they don't have to be pre-configured. If we click on the memory, memory delete button here on the very top, we can actually, uh, this is like a shift button. So if I click on this one and hold it, I can just delete them right on the deck and then set new ones. You see? So now I set them to the same thing. And the best part is the music doesn't have to stop for this. So I can like come here, set one there, set one there, I set one there and be like, oh, actually, I need another one. So I delete this guy and then press. Yeah. And I do know that the, the video, like the, um, the, the screen look, uh, is a little bit delayed, like I said before. But I hope you get the, the concept there. Yeah. So these are those. The hold button right on the, um, well, my right, your left side of the hot cue. So these three lit ones would give you your flex or FLX. You can see it lit up on the screen there. Essentially what this does is it allows you to do tricks and once you stop with your trick, it's almost as if the track was going without any interruption. So the best case to really show this is if we click the vinyl mode and we engage this guy, you can see how the head, the play head carries on. You can see this line that carries on playing. And then because I've stopped the track, as soon as I, you can see that it starts flashing there on the screen as well. And it's flashing here as well um, to let you know that this function is actually enabled. So if I di disable it, it would uh, be running, um, it would just like, not flush, I forgot the word now. So yeah, I can just like stop it. And then if I release it, the track carries on as if it hadn't at all been touched from the DJ, which is me in this particular case. This is one button that I actually missed. This is the uh, snap feature. You can see it also on the screen in the middle that it's, um, um, you know, flashing when I press it and it also will give you an indication. Because it's a global setting, it would work on all the DJ decks. So if I click here, I can also see, it, um, um, you know, not lit anymore there. So if I click it there, I can see it there uh, on any deck because it, it um, affects all three decks in the same way. Right, uh, what next? Yes, the call button here on the very right next to the hot cues is uh, essentially activating a loop. So. What this does is if you have a saved loop, and let's say I have a safe loop here, like this guy, and I have it there. And let's say I was back in the track, and I wanted the track to go to kind of engage this loop when it gets to that point, I can just click on the active, and you can see without me doing anything, the track would automatically start looping there. And you just kind of have to prepare this in advance, then um, disengage it if you don't need that. And you have to prepare this in advance, but it's a very good way of, I don't know if you have to run to the toilet or you wanna 
um, have a few more seconds to find the next song when you're DJing. You just kind of have to create this and then uh, the track would loop and maybe if you're not there, the music won't stop because this is priority number one, of course, uh, when we're DJing. Uh, moving up a little bit, obviously the rotary wheel, you can um, you know, select tracks and load them on each deck, but the back button right on top of it actually allows you to um, kind of enlarge your browsing section. So if, because you obviously you see only a few rows now, if I really wanted to go down into my library, I just press that and if I press it again, I jump back into my waveform view, which is super easy. And like I said, allows me to select music without even touching the laptop. Finally, on the left hand side of the screen, you have what are normally the text mode and the time buttons. So the text mode is actually my quantize which means that if I engage this and you can see it in the middle of the screen lit up, I won't be able, no matter how many times I touch this, it would only engage this on the one beat because if I have this disengaged, it would just actually do this uh, with respect to the beat grid that we have created. And this is really it actually this there's not much more to it uh, some people have asked me on uh, the um, questionnaire can we map the cue buttons can we map the track search buttons unfortunately this is not something we can really do because they're just locked out for those basic functions and we can't really do anything with them but you know what we have is already better than um, what or not having anything uh, if you want an actual diagram of everything in terms of what button does what, which buttons need shift and which don't. Uh, if you go to my website, which is axofficial.com, you can, oh, this is me, and then you can go down richly on the homepage and there is the full article that I have written many years ago now, I think. Um, yeah, you can see 2018 is actually when I've written this last, and this is the last version also, which we're currently focusing on today. But if you scroll down into the article, then you would be able to see uh, an actual legend of which button does what and how to engage the function, etc., etc. And then obviously you can change these to whatever you want. And this also a brief instruction of how to set it up here. This is also kind of what we've covered in today's um, stream. So it's essentially uh, kind of uh, summarizing this. And then uh, the link to my website is in the description of the, the video. So if you need that in the future, you can refer to it again. Yep. So in terms of the questions that we had already before the stream started, the crazy blinking happens when you um, kind of double up the mapping and then the deck doesn't know whether it should look at the default mapping or the one that you're importing. So you just have to delete one and that's working. If you want to change the deck focus, you can actually come here. Let's say you set up the deck focuses and then you get something wrong. You can actually come here and press the rotary button and hold it a little bit. And it would actually go back to deck select. So right now it's on A, B, and you can see if I click B, now I actually get to control the other deck. You can see on the right hand side with the same deck. And if I push it up, you'll be able to hear that. If I hold this down, Again, I'll be able to come back to A, and now you can see that it's on the left side. Yeah. So normally you should be able to, um, if you go to your controller manager, you should be able to change it from here, from the website. I know someone emailed me a while back and said, yeah, my button, my rotary knob is actually broken off on my DJ uh, deck. Can I do this from the software? Normally you should be able to allocate it from here, uh, but I was testing this before the stream started, and unfortunately, it wouldn't take the change automatically. So if I select it from here, it wouldn't do this. But for example, if I now select deck B, you can see that it updates there automatically. But if I change this from here, it wouldn't take it. And maybe you need to set it up and then restart the, the software so that the changes take effect. It's probably like a fail safe uh, feature that, um, is built into the software. Yeah, this is one of the questions again. Um, yes, what can be mapped? I think we also discussed this. So essentially anything on the left of the jog wheel cannot be mapped. 
we cannot map the USB and the CD uh, buttons that are here. And um, and that's it, really. I mean, you can essentially play around, but these buttons are not allowed. I kind of wanted initially to do like a bit jumps with them, but unfortunately, that really didn't didn't work because yeah, you can't even see them as MIDI inputs in the software. Yeah. So this is it. I hope this has been useful. Uh, before we sign off for today, let me just jump in the chat and see if there are any questions. Okay, so here, hey, hello. Right, okay, so let's see. Miguel, yeah, he likes ASIO for all. Yes, mate, it's very useful. It's not only for this purpose, it's just um, a very good aggregator in general. If you're actually interested in streaming with OBS or any other software, um, it's good because it really allows you to unlock the power of your um, of your um, sound cards, whatever they are. So you know how MacBooks are class compliant and a lot of the sound equipment is just plug and play. Azure for all is essentially a Windows answer to that uh, specific functionality. And uh, in a lot of the ways, if you have Azure for all, you wouldn't actually need to install the drivers of the specific manufacturer that has your sound card. And I still prefer to have that and maybe on top Azure for all, just to be safe in case one fails, I choose the other. Um, but if I actually, um, you know, if I actually do uh, audio stuff because now I've also moved to Mac, it's much easier on Mac. Uh, Windows is better for streaming though. Uh, it seems to be a bit more optimized because I have some trouble with my OBS uh, software on my MacBook and that's why I need a Windows machine normally for that. So right now I'm actually running two computers. Um, what Windows is better at is, like I said, the whole streaming thing and also uh, OBS now has an Azure driver for, o uh, for itself. So you can actually have an Azure as one of the sources uh, for music. And this is only a couple of weeks old so it's very, um, it's very useful, really, and a lot of people have started testing. It's still in beta, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but it, I, I think a lot of people have had some success with that. Yeah, what else? Sarah says this is very interesting. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of nerdy stuff. It's really difficult to explain because you just kind of have to play around with it on your own to understand it. And... I have used, like I said before, I have used this mapping on many, many occasions for many, many gigs, and it has never failed me, both with Windows and with Mac. And once it's set up, maybe a little bit fiddly, but once it's set up, it, um, it it's there and it's working. And like I said, don't you know, don't take this as a promise that you would never have problems with it, or if you use it, whatever. Uh, because I hacked it on, on my own and that's why I gave it away. So if people need the same thing, they can use it. But essentially, if if you want to play around with it at home before you maybe take it away to a gig, that's, that's probably uh, what you should be doing with anything anyway, really. Yeah, that's it. Any other questions in the chat? Let's see, let's see. No one. So I, I'd imagine everything is super, super clear. And then you guys will be able to start using the uh, mapping and you know create some cool mixes with it. Like I said, it's the closest that I've personally experienced to DJing with like high-end gear, especially because of the hot cues. I use them a lot. Um, and it's really helping me kind of create cool mixes on the go because what I do is I go and prepare my music in advance and then I maybe work on a few different versions of mixes and stuff like that, but then I never really come up with them and then ex execute them the same exact way. And having those hot cues there ready for me um, is essentially a way for me to look at the crowd, look at the party, see how it's going, and then if I want to mix faster, then I can. If I want to create like a mashup with an acapella, I can do this on the fly. I don't have to go and be like, oh, now I need to listen to the acapella. So I, I have it there with a the press of a button. I can uh, isolate a phrase of the whole acapella or I can do um, like a loop or something. And it's really bringing a little bit of a flavor, especially when it comes to three deck mixing, because 
three decks and then even four deck mixing is a lot about bringing little elements from different songs that complement each other and not necessarily having everything blasting out all at the same time because then things are starting to clash yeah so that's that anyway if you guys have any questions obviously comment section under the video would be always there and uh i'll be you know email me and all that kind of stuff this was just for people that are part of my newsletter i will probably release it in the future uh, for other people to watch as well unless it gets blocked by youtube or whatever but i made sure that i use uh, songs that are um, on the library so hopefully there won't be any copyright issues there and then yeah co comment sections email me and then if there's any questions or anything i'll try and help with what i can and then like i said use this to whichever way you want always test it before you go to a gig um, i actually had a funny story when one time one guy actually asked me to uh, install team viewer on my computer and set up the mapping on his uh, decks 10 minutes before his gig and that was very very stressful for him obviously i wanted to help him out and in the end it worked out but um, just don't do that you know test it at home make sure you understand what button does what make sure you don't get any weird issues that would like throw you off in the middle of your gig especially if you do like open format um, especially if you do um, weddings weddings are very important that they go smoothly because you know you don't want some stupid equipment glitch to ruin um, the day for for the for the happy couple okay cool i'll shut up now <laughs> so if you if you guys have questions you know where to find me hopefully by now um Axe official is uh all my social media i also stream on twitch i want to point this out every wednesday at eight o'clock cet is it eight yes it is eight so every wednesday if you want to see these decks in action um and this setup you can come and see enjoy the vibes uh, we're starting to build a little bit of a community so it's super nice vibes and super nice people um so yeah if you have any questions let me know and if you don't don't let me know and enjoy <laughs> you know enjoy the mapping enjoy the, the the experience with tractor and with that said i'll say goodbye and i'll see you guys very very soon ciao for now